Happy Mother's Day. When Dan first asked me if I wanted to speak, I thought he was joking. There's many times on Sunday he'll wake up and say, why don't you preach today? And I said, yeah, no. Well, he asked me a couple weeks ago, why don't you preach on Mother's Day? And I said, yeah, no. And he gave me the look, and I said, you're serious? And he said, yes. And this, what I'm going to talk about, just automatically came in my mind, something that I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to talk about one of the most prominent mothers in the Bible, and that's Mary, the mother of Jesus. I grew up in a Catholic home. Mary is very prominent. I've always been fascinated by her, just absolutely fascinated. We would have stained glass windows with Mary and statues and pictures of her, and she was always beautiful. And what struck me is she just looked kind. She just looked like a nice, a nice person. And I've always thought she was pretty, pretty awesome. So there's so many emotions with Mary. Some of the things she had to go through in her life and when I got older and realized and started reading about some of the things that she went through, I thought, man, I don't know how she did it. She had some faith to do what she did. So I'm going to start with Luke 1, 26. And I'm going to go clear to 38. Now, y'all, there's lots of papers here. This font is real big so I can read it, so don't get so nervous, okay? <laughs> Just saying, okay? And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered unto her and said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is a sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, Mary was a teenager at this time, and I cannot even fathom what she was thinking. And I think of things, what if that was me? What would I think? First of all, I would have been scared to death to have an angel come and talk to me, and I would have wondered, is this a dream or is this real? You know, what is happening? And then for him to say, uh, God picked you and you're going to have his son that would have blown my mind, you know, especially since, and like Mary said, well, how can this be since I have not known a man? Um, and they said that, well, the Holy Ghost is going to take care of that, and he will, you know, overshadow you, and, and that's the science part of it. But then the rest of it, you're thinking, it will ruin my reputation, you know, and Joseph won't want anything to do with me now. You know, that's, that's done. Plus, you know, I could be stoned for this. That was a stonable offense at that time. If you were unmarried and got pregnant, they could kill you for that. And, eh, and that's just awful scary. But thankfully, God told uh, Joseph the same thing, and he did not do what he lawfully could have done. So we all know that worked out. And I think Mary had a lot of faith, and she said, okay, I will do it. You know, I will do as you say. And that shows a great amount of faith. I think that's pretty, what a privilege. What a privilege. So now we go to the next scripture, and that's Luke 2 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made by Cyrenius, the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. 
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I can just imagine Dan coming up to me when I'm eight and a half months pregnant and saying, uh, honey, let's go on an adventure. <laughs> and just, yeah, just to have him explain. And it was, it was roughly, um, roughly 80 miles, depending on which way they went. There was a couple different ways, but it was roughly about 80 miles. And it would take several days, and I could just dance, hear Dan say, the wind will be blowing in your hair, you know. We'll <laughs> camp at night. It'll be great. We'll get to the inn, and we'll have an awesome room. You know, it'll, it'll just be wonderful. So... Um, the wind blowing through your hair, it was not a convertible, it was on a donkey. So it's not quite the same, and it's very bumpy. And several days on the road and having to stop and camp, and I know a lot of people like to camp, but that's just not my cup of tea. So I just don't think that sounds like a very fun adventure. And my first thought would be, I'm staying with Mom. <laughs> By the way, my mother is right here. Stand up, Mom. She surprised me this morning and came. So, thanks for coming, Mom. But you'd let me stay with you, wouldn't you? Yeah, see? I could just stay with my mom. But Joseph, I mean, the Bible doesn't say maybe she had to go to be part of this. I don't know. Um, but I just think, what an amazing woman to do that. And she was obedient to her husband. And she wanted to support him, and she went with him. I just think that's just awesome, just the fact that she got there. And then, you know, she's probably thinking on the donkey if she's, you know, bouncing up and down on the road. Oh, I can't wait till we get to that inn. I just need to lay down. I'm so tired. And well, they get there, and there was no reservations made, obviously. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. And Joseph goes to the inn and knocks on the door, and they're full. You know, everyone has the same idea. Everyone's coming to town for the same reason, and they're full. And I believe you know, someone saw Mary and thought, oh, that poor thing. You know, you guys can go stay in our stable. You can stay there for the night. And so they go there, and she starts to have labor pains. And she has her baby in a barn with all the stinky stuff there and all the, you know, animals. There's probably, like, sheep and donkeys and stuff. And the Bible doesn't say once again, but I hope someone came and helped her. I can't imagine Joseph doing that. This is her first baby, and she doesn't know. You know, so I'm hoping some of the women, someone came and helped her. But then she had him, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, which is a food trough for the animals. So, you know, I had my kids in a sterile, clean hospital, and it was still pretty hard. I can't even imagine what she went through. So think of how strong she had to be. Um, I think that's awesome. And God took care of her, and she knew it. I mean, God said, you're going to have my son. So I think in the back of her mind, she always had to be thinking, you know, this is of God, and he's going to take care of us. And once again, he did. And this is Luke 2, 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every day, every year, at the Feast of the Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and when they sought him among the kinsfolk and acquaintance, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast that thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the sayings which he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these sayings in her heart. And Jesus in Christian was increased in wisdom and stature and favored with God and man. Okay, now, this one upsets me a little bit because I can just picture Jacob doing something like this, you know. They're traveling with a big convoy of people and I'm up there with Dan and we're thinking, ah, oh, Jake's back there with his cousins and friends having fun, you know, we'll get him tonight. Well, they get there at night and they set up camp and they can't find him. He's nowhere. 
So they have to go. It's a day. It's a whole day's journey. So they go clear back to Jerusalem to find him. And it says three days. So that means they looked for another day or so and couldn't find him. And there he was. And Joseph doesn't say anything. It's Mary that goes up, basically, and paraphrasing, what are you doing? We have been scared to death. Why did you do this? You know, and Jesus says, well, I'm about my father's business. And I'd say, well, you're going to be about your mother's business because you're grounded. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. You know, that's just, well, nowadays you, you don't take away the phone. You take away their charger. So the, sl the phone slowly dies as they watch it. But you could not do that back in those days. So I would be making him help me do stuff in the house and he would be grounded for a while. I'm telling you that. And it says that, they didn't understand what he was saying. It's like they didn't get it. I know, I know they knew that he was the son of God, but he was just 12. That's pretty young to do that. And it says his mother kept all these sayings in her heart because I'm sure she saw as he grew up all the things that happened, the way that God took care of him when, it seems, when there seemed to be no way. She had him in a barn, you know, and everything turned out good. And then he was gone for three days in a big town without them, and here he is. He's fine. And once again, I'm sure in the back of her mind, she thought he is God's son, God's going to take care of us. And, and once again, proved true, he did. And now I'm going to John 2.1. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with this? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he says to you, you do it. Now I can see being at this wedding and running out of wine is horrible. It's like you're having a dinner and you run out of food. You know, they, that just, you didn't do that. It was very, it was a very bad thing to happen. So obviously Mary's concerned and she says, Jesus, they're out of wine. You know, and paraphrasing, he goes, Mom, that's not my problem. You know, what, what, what am I supposed to do about it? Is, my time's not yet come. And I can just see Mary looking at him and going over to him and putting her hand on his face like, and turn around saying, whatever he says to do, y'all do it. Because <laughs> he kind of ignored her, if you ask me. He wasn't going to do it. But he did not dishonor his mom and she said that to the servants and we all know what happened he turned the water into wine and saved the day you know I think like Jesus always saves the day once again he did and he honored his mom and did that and you know this may not have been such a big deal as some of the other stuff but to me Jesus came through for his mom when she asked him to even though maybe he wasn't quite ready to do it and this is the one that always gets me and I don't know if I can do it without crying, but I'm going to try. John 19, 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Dan always preaches about, on Good Friday, about what Jesus went through, and that was horrible and terrible, but I always think of Mary. I don't know how much she saw. I don't know if she was at the trial where people were yelling for her son, crucify him, for her son. I can't imagine one of my kids and being with a hateful crowd that hated him and was yelling for his death. And then if she was there when they whipped him, whipped him with a cat of nine tails to see that, and I just would want to go over there and just take all those Roman soldiers and just beat them all for hurting him. Uh, you know, I can't imagine that. And then to watch them put the crown of thorns on his head if she was there. You know, you just want to soothe him and, and make it stop, make his pain stop. But maybe in her heart, you know, she might have been thinking, you know, he can recover from this. This is horrible. We'll take him home and he'll be fine. You know, we'll heal him. We'll, we'll medicate him and, he, you know, he'll be okay. And then if she was on the road watching him with that cross, being bearing, trying to bear that, and him not being able to, and she can't do anything, and watching that, I just, I don't know how she did it. I just think she had some strength. But then when they put him on the cross and put the cross up, she had to know it's done. You know, there's no coming back from this. He's, he's gone. 
And I know that he preached about this, but I just don't think people understood. It says in here a couple times that they didn't understand what he meant. I don't think they really got it. I just don't think, and I can't imagine being at the foot of the cross, watch him suffering like this, and watch him die. I mean, part of me would want to be home not being, not being there because I couldn't stand to see it. And then the rest of me, I, I had to be with him for him to know someone there was there that loved him, that I'm with you, Jesus. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And what does he do in the midst of his pain and suffering? I can't imagine how, he, how awful it was, but what does he think of? He thinks of his mom, seeing his mom down there. And he basically tells his disciple, from now on, she's your mom. I want you to take care of her. And it says that he did from that day forth. He took care of her. So Jesus took care of his mom at the end. And he knew he was going to be gone, but he did find someone to take care of her. And I just think that was such a loving thing for him to do amidst you know, what he was going through to think of his mom down there. And I just think that's wonderful. And Mary, she went through so many emotions. She was, and just imagine, though, three days later to hear that he rose from the dead and he's alive. Once again, he talked about that, but I just don't think people understood it. I don't think they got it. But he, he's alive. And she was in the upper room when he was there. So, I mean, she, she saw him and she knew he was alive. And I can't imagine she went from utter despair to utter joy. And I think that's just wonderful. And all the emotions that Mary went through, I mean, I think she's, she's dealt with a lot more in her life than I've had to deal with, with mine. But she was strong and obedient and she loved the Lord. And God saw her through all of it. She made it through. So that's what I have for you for today. Amen.